Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you seven type tips and tricks for working in Illustrator. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can do things with fonts in Illustrator. And I've got seven little tips for you. One of them is how to take a font style that you have and apply it to lots of different pieces of type all at once. I'm going to show you how you can put type on a path such as I have here and how you can adjust it so it's nicely balanced. I'm going to show you how you can break type like this into individual pieces of type using a script. I'll show you how you can warp type and how you can use fancy characters like these glyphs and find them really easily. And then we're going to see how you can create this effect which is two pieces of type on top of each other with a special kind of font that works this way. And then I'm going to show you how you can create text that goes two ways, round this way and round this way all on what appears to be a circle. So if you're ready let's get started. The first of the seven techniques we're going to look at here is this one. I'm going to show you how you can divide a text frame. I've typed in some text and I just pressed enter at the end of every line, but now I want to break this up into five individual lines of text and I'm using a script to do that. There is a video here that shows you how to do scripting in Illustrator and I suggest that you look at that. Here is the script file scripts and I'm using divide text frame and it just divides my text frame into multiple lines of text that can then be moved and separately dealt with. Now if you're looking for the script it's here. It's at wundes, w-u-n-d-e-s dot com forward slash js for AI and that's the site that has the script and it's called divide text frame. Now I'm going to separately deal with one of these pieces of text. I'm going to enlarge it and I'm going to apply a different font to it. I'm going to choose Nexa Bold and let's just make it a different color. Now if I look at that and say well that's fine, I really like that, I actually want to apply it to all these pieces of text, I can do so. I'm just going to select all of these pieces of text and click on the eyedropper because if I now click on this piece of text that very same formatting will be applied to all these other pieces of text. So I could do it one at a time or I can do it all at once. So if I like the text over here for the word thing. I'm just going to select the word thing and let's just go and sample this text. I don't need to work out what the font was. I don't need to work out anything about it. I just select my piece of text, eyedropper over this and click and I get to something that's exactly the same. So there are two of the tips. Let's look now at warping text. I have this text that's just regular text typed in. I haven't done anything to it apart from type it and format it. With it selected with the select tool, I'm going to choose Object, Envelope, Distort, Make with Warp. And this allows me to warp the text and I can use any of the warps that are here. For example, Arch or Arc or I could use Fisheye. And then I can adjust the settings as required. So I can make them go in all sorts of directions. I can distort them horizontally and vertically. So I can create any effect using these tools here. Let's just make this look a little bit more sensible and click OK. So there's a way of warping text using the envelope distort feature. Let's have a look at glyphs. Glyphs are special characters that are embedded in fonts and they're really helpful to be able to use but quite often you don't know what's there to be able to use it. So if you choose window type and then glyphs you can get access to the glyphs inside the fonts. Now we're looking at the moment at Raconteur which is a font that I'm using here but let's just click with the type tool just out here somewhere in the document and let's go and find a font that I know has some really interesting glyphs in it. It's really a dingbat font. So I'm just going to go and get it here and it's KG Flavor and Frames. 
it's a shareware font and it's got some little moustaches in it and because I'm seeing it in the glyphs panel I can see what these characters are they're actually letters of the alphabet but I can see clearly that this is a cute little moustache so I'm going to click it to select it double click to insert it into the document now this is a font character so it can be sized the same way as we would the letter A, B, C or D for example so there's our little character that's sourced from a dingbat font and you can view any font in here and see what's available inside that font and of course some of the most interesting of them are these sort of dingbat fonts Let's look now at an effect that you can create with some fonts that come in pairs. I'm going to click on this text and I'm going to a font here that has a pigeon pair. It is this KG Second Chances and it comes as a sketch and a solid font. There are other ones here, there's a KG next to me, solid and sketched and you'll find quite often that fonts come in pairs with a sketched and a solid version. So let's choose KG Second Chances Sketch. This is a shareware font. Now it's a sort of sketched look to this font and you can see that black is currently my fill color. If I change the fill color, what I'm doing is changing the color of the lines in the font, but there is no way for me to go ahead and actually change the fill behind the font. Well that is unless I use its pigeon pair. So let's go to the layers palette and just open up this layer and I'm going to locate the entry for two fonts. Here it is here. I'm going to drag it onto the new icon. So now I have two copies of this font. I have the sketched version text up here, but let's select the one below and then let's go and make that the pigeon pair font. So instead of second chances sketched, this is now second chances solid and now we're getting a solid look to our type but the only reason why we're do getting that look is because it is underneath and exactly the same color but if I change the color of this to blue for example then the red is on top and we can start seeing the difference in this font I've gone back and now grabbed the top one which is the sketch version and look what happens when I make it white or black so this is a way that with some pigeon pair fonts that come in a sketched version and a filled version that you can get this sort of filled type effect in Illustrator. Of course if you're going to make changes to the font you have to make changes to both of them at a time so it's best if you set them the way you want them to look with the first version of the font and then just add the second one later on. Now let's look at text on a path. I have some text here that I'm going to put on a path so let's go and create a pen path for it. And I could draw this with the pencil tool or I can draw it with the pen tool. And I'm going to turn off the fill and the stroke. So this is my path. Now let's go to this piece of text. I'm just going to select it and copy it with edit copy. And then I'm going to go and find the type on a path tool and it shares a toolbar position with the type tool. I'm going to click it and then I'm going to find my path and here is the path. So I'm going to click once on the path and then just paste it in with control V. And now my text is on the path. And you can see here that there is a sort of blue line going through the letter D and if I drag on that I can move the text along the path so I can adjust where it is on that path. And I can also with that blue bar selected I can drag it over to the other side of the line. So if I want the text to be upside down provided I can locate that little blue line and give it a pull I can make my text upside down. But you will need to be using the select tool to do this, not the type tool. And you will need to be really aware that you're looking for a thin blue line. It can be a little difficult to see, but it should be there. So finally, before we end, let's have a look at the text on a circle that goes in two different ways. 
So I'm going to start by drawing out a circle and click the ellipse tool and drag to draw my circle. I'm holding the shift key as I do so it is a circle and I'm going to let go of the left mouse button and then the right. I'm going to take the fill and stroke off this circle. Now I want text to go two ways and to do that I need to break the circle into two pieces and I do it with the scissors tool which shares a toolbar position with the eraser tool. So I'm going to grab the scissors tool, I'm just going to cut this circle at these two points. Just click on the anchor points and that cuts it into two pieces. There's a piece up here and it's a piece down here. And with it cut into two pieces I can now add my type. So I'm going to go to the type on a path tool and I'm going to locate this top piece. I'm going to click here and I'm going to start typing. Well my text is really really big so let's just bring it down to a way more manageable size. So I'm just going to use 30 points. Okay, so I've got type goes one way and I'm going to move this so I'm going to go and get my select tool and I'm just going to drag this blue pointer so that the text is pretty much balanced here and now I'm going to go back to my type on a path tool, pick up my bottom shape here, click on it and type the other piece of text. And again with the select tool just move this around. Now if I want to enlarge my type I can do so. I'm just going to go here into the size box, hold the shift key as I press the up arrow key to enlarge or shrink the type. Pressing a down arrow key makes it smaller, the up arrow key makes it bigger. Holding shift just does it much more quickly. So now I have my text, let's just set aside here and let's go and flip this piece of text over our edge here. Well it's too big so we'll just make it a little bit smaller and let's just drag it into position. As I do so you may see that there's a slight problem here in that the type is going over the outside of the circle here and the inside of the circle here so it doesn't actually look like it's going all the way around a single circle. Well we can solve that by double clicking on the type on a path tool because we can align the path to whatever we want to align it to and if we align it to the center and click OK the type is going to be aligned to the center of the path and let's do that with this piece as well. And now we'll see that the type looks a whole lot more like it's going around our circle. And to finish off we can add another circle just holding the shift key as I drag out an ellipse. And let's make black the stroke color. I'm going to select all these three shapes so that is the circle and the two half circles and just click on the horizontal line center just to make sure that my outside circle is in fact centered exactly. And let's just move our little mustache into the middle here. So there you have a number of things that you can do with type in Illustrator. You can divide it into multiple lines using a script, you can warp it, you can use the eyedropper tool to copy formats, you can use two fonts that work well together, you can place text on a path and you can place text on a circle going in different ways. And of course you've seen too how to use glyphs in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this SkillFeed video. Look out for more of my video tutorials here at SkillFeed.com. Elsewhere on the web you'll find me at Twitter where I'm Helen Bradley, at Google Plus I'm Plus Helen Bradley and at Facebook I'm Project Woman. And visit my website at ProjectWoman.com.